Okay, in this particular exercise, you are going to apply a one-page styled theme to a WordPress um, site. So here I've got my little sandbox going, and I've got my default home page content here, and I'm using a theme called Magazine Basic, and of course it looks pretty darn basic, but that's fine under certain circumstances. So I'm going to go to my Manage Themes I've gotten into my dashboard and I've gone to appearance and themes and I have um, in preparation for this little demo I've, I've waffled between choosing customizer as a theme or Xerif Lite. They are both very good themes. There are actually tons of really good themes out there um, but in terms of my purposes here uh, you could actually choose either of these themes. You could even choose the theme 2017 if you wanted to play with that for an advanced feature. But I'm going to demo customizer. I'm going to go ahead and click on activate that. And one of the first things I want to see, of course, is what it does to my site. So I want to come back out here and reload. And what's kind of neat about this site is it gives me these little information boxes that tell me or prompt me some of the things that I might need to do to customize this th site. I can still see my little homepage stuff down there. So if I were attached to that, that would be pretty cool to leave there. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the different things. Now, it does look as if the About Me favorite links in the homepage did land here at the top. I'm not totally keen on that being on the right-hand side. Um, I happen to be a fan of putting my home buttons towards the left, but that's just me. There's really no rhyme or reason to that. There are lots of design patterns out there that suggest you can do a variety of different things. Just do not confuse your audience. So don't do it one way one week and then change it next week. Um, make a decision based off of what you think your audience is going to be able to handle. So let's go ahead and customize some of this. This could be fun. Um, it says you can now display your menu as a vertical and mobile friendly site menu animated when revealed. Um, try it with a demo or change your menu design now. I, I know how to change our menu. So I'm going to come in here to Appearance, Themes, and Customize. Once I'm here, one of the things that I want to point out to you, which I'm just totally excited about, is the number of settings that you get to play with in this particular theme. It's a lot of fun. So if I go to my global settings, I can you know play with my different uh, theme options here. And some of these are things that I would expect, right? But here's my skin and obviously it's pointing to this pink. So I'm going to presume that that's what's governing that. So if I wanted to do, let's say, kind of a neon orangish, I could do that. Of course, I'd want to pick a color that is appropriate for my content. Um, Google fonts, I think this uh, allows you to choose a font kind of thing right within your um, site here as opposed to having to load a different um, app. I'm going to, because I want to make this very visual for you guys, I'm going to choose this, uh, which one was it? There was, uh, okay. I've spent way too much time on this, so I'm going to just simply pick one now. There. Okay, so that's very, very fancy. I don't know that I would do that, um, particularly with all this other visual stuff going on, but just to give you an idea. This is also way cool. Normally, we would have to do this within CSS, but it allows me to set our default font size, and what that's going to do is automatically increase my page sizes and before I, I make myself crazy, I'm going to actually change that right now. So uh, that's for fonts. I can add my social links. I can add, uh, do link styles. I can do a fade effect on link hover. I can do, um, I'd have to play with uh, what the smooth scroll and click looks like. I'm not quite sure. I can play with my image settings. I can do high resolution if I wanted to. The light box effects, that's way cool. Um, all sorts of little fun things to do under the global settings. And under the headers, finally, I'm going to get to this menu stuff, which is where I was coming in the first place. I'm uh, choosing my header. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose my header to pop over to the right. So I can do that there. I can display a top border, which I'm assuming is this green thing. 
display the tagline in the header, which is what this is, right? I can display the menu, a menu in a box. So here, if you just saw that box become available right there, I could do that. Sticky header stuff, I'm not going to get too far into that just yet. Um, I'm going to go back to header and my navigation menus. And my main menu I'm setting as the main menu here. And my design, I can do it as a vertical, which tucks it under here. I'm going to go ahead and save and publish that and then preview the work so far. So I've moved from something like this to, let me reload here. Now, obviously, the little prompt is still there. And so at a certain point, I'm going to want to close that menu. Um, although it's very handy to have that hyperlink there that allows you to go and edit that uh, menu right away. But I'm going to be brave and get rid of the, the notice. So uh, there's my content. And uh, as typical as these one page um, headers are, it's really kind of cool that your whole top image kind of gradually slides away as you move down. And then these are my featured. Um, but you know, here are some little tips. Uh, uh, select your own slider now or remove this demo slider. Um, you can always add it back, I'm sure, later. Uh, remove, change or remove the post sliders. So you would want to do that. Um, that's going to take us back into our customizer. And it looks like um, I'm under the content home pages front page. And I could probably even take away that um, post, excuse me, those, um, let me flip back before I speak to anything here, right? So here, when we started out, here was my static homepage. If I want to flip this over to my latest posts, it's going to show me all of my posts, which is kind of cool. I could do a filter, uh, a category filter. So if I wanted to do just the important points one, I'm a fan though of having a space where all of my posts are present because otherwise I'd have to do a lot of building out of other kinds of stuff. Um, I could do sidebars here. Um, very, very excited about this theme because there are just so many different options that you can play around with. I'm going to do no sidebar, uh, display home um, featured pages area, which is what this is up here. Um, the read more button, I could change that text, I guess, if I wanted to. Um, my page one, I could select that as, for lack of better, something I can do that as my home, my favorite links, about me. Now, we're going to have to double check this uh, image. It might be coming in from um, the actual page itself. Now, I'm assuming that all of this text goes away once I... Um, there it goes. Uh, take that in there. So I might want to uh, get rid of all of that stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to keep going. Um, so that's what all of that is about. I'm going to go back home. The sidebars, should I have them? They could be in there. Um, the footer, I could put in some footer pieces here up to and including some of the other stuff that uh, could go elsewhere, like those social icons. And gosh, we haven't even gotten to the advanced options here. We could uh, do a variety, I guess, of different kinds of things here. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Save and Publish. And I'm going to go take a look at my site. And here's what it looks like now. And somehow or another, I've lost that big header up here. I'm going to have to go back in and take a look at that. If I recollect correctly, that is under Content Home. Um, and I'm going to pause the video where I while I find that piece because it is displaying here. How weird is that? Okay, we are back in terms of continuing to edit the slider up top here. And I've gone ahead and made a couple of changes. First of all, I popped the logo back to the left, popped the menu back to the left, as well as making it horizontal. I just feel more comfortable that way. I have also figured out that in terms of the images for these sample feature pages, 
it is setting the featured image on that page. So if you wanted an image here, you'd want to go ahead and set those um, feature pages to have um, featured images. So let me just go ahead and show that to you very quickly to make sure you remember um, what we're doing here. I'm gonna go to the dashboard. And here, before in your posts, you added a lot of featured images. Now I went back into my pages and I went ahead and clicked into each of my pages and then down in the right, I went ahead and set a featured image. And then that's what's driving this image out here in the front end. Um, okay, so easy enough. What I was working on was the um, display of the um, slider up top here. And the default setting is to just make a slider out of my posts, which is what this is doing right now. But there is a way to select specific posts for this uh, slider. So let me go ahead and show that to you super quick. I've gone under content, home and posts, and I'm going to the front page. Front page is also governing where these sampled feature pieces are, are landing. And here is the slider options. And so I have an option to auto auto generate my sliders from my blog posts and how many posts I want that to be. So if I wanted six, I could do that. And I would assume that it would show me six different posts here. And indeed it does. So that's one way I could do that. I could also go back to their demo uh, slider, which um, was the thing that you saw on online. And it only has two apparently. So, But then I can also make a custom um, uh, slider. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go back to my home here. Close that out. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go to media and I'm going to um, actually edit the media that I want to change. And now I'm going to scroll down here. Previously, this was set to no, but now on the images, I have this option to add to a slider. I'm going to click on yes. And here's the important part. I want to uh, um, update this here because otherwise I don't get what I want out on the main page. I'll show that to you here in a moment. Um, and then down here at the bottom, I can, this is much like a category or a tag. I can basically add this right here on the fly. So if I wanted to call this, you know, main slider or, you know, Tuesday slider or weekend slider, I could, I can build out several different sliders. I've gone ahead and set up a slider called slider one. So I've now added this to that slider one. And then I've also got this other image here. Um, the reason why I had to edit, this is going back up here, here, I had some garbage in there before the actual file name. But if you take a look here, that's what's displaying here. Here it's edited because I did that. I would have to also go in and edit that. So I can go ahead and edit this slide from here, but I'm going to um, click on update so that that gets updated. Um, and then I'm just going to go and repeat this process so that you get a sense of that. And that was this little eyeball here. So I've got this golf visualization and it's already turned on for yes slider. Um, and sorry, I got my menu sitting in the way. And I'm going to put that in as tools viz. I can get um, specific in terms of the color. I can choose whether it opens in a new page. It's set to slider one, which is fine. I'm going to update that. And I'm going to, uh, for the sake of um, definitely get this, getting this in there, here's an image that I hadn't added to the slider before. I'm going to turn that on. And now I've got these other options. And I'm going to do brains. And I'm going to choose the slider that it's going to go on to. And I'm going to update that. Now, if I go back out here, I would not expect that just yet because I'm still on a default slider. So if I scroll up, there's that default slider. So I'm going to come back to appearance and customize. And I'm going to go to my um, content, home and pages, posts, front page. And now my slider, I'm going to choose my slider one. 
and there it is. I'm going to save that. I'm going to come back out here and I'm going to reload this page. And here is my custom slider. Now I'm presuming that these little edit options and these little notes here would go away once I log out because I'm still in the editor. I believe that that's why that's there. I'm also seeing here that this is, uh, that it says this block is visible for admins only. Um, you know, I could dismiss this notice and make it go away, or I could um, um, just simply um, add that in there. I'm going to, for the sake of actually taking a look at what this looks like, if I'm not logged in, I'm going to log out. I'm going to close my other browser here. And now I've actually pasted that web address in there. So I'm going to go to my sandbox and here it is. And you can see that I do not have any of the um, little prompts. I can see that one of the things I might do is change this, go in and figure out how to make this for posts going across. I thought I saw something in terms of how many posts going across that would be. Um, I would also have to figure out how to make these hyperlinks into different pages. And I believe that that would have to be set back on the menu of the uh, image itself. So that's a very quick tutorial on customizer. Um, again, when you are doing your exercise too, you can choose customizer, you can use Xerof light, or you can really go out on a limb and choose any theme you want. As long as it lays out as a one page theme such as this, that would be great. See you later.